Welcome to the last one where we talk about cations testing. So the story that was told by my teachers are when Cindy has a very strong pressure by their teacher, she went back home and cooked a meat. And then she went to watch the TV show called ASI and she has a fantastic sleep, ZSS. By the way, ASI is basically CSI being changed name into ASI. Well, it doesn't really matter, it's just a way for you to remember. So basically, Cindy stands for C-I-N, Pressure stands for P-S-I, Cook the Me stands for M-I-I, Me, um, then Watch the TV Show is A-S-I, and then Sleep is Jet S-S. In all this, basically, the middle number, the middle alphabet, it stands for when you add excess sodium hydroxide, what will happen? The right side means when you add excess ammonia, what will happen? So for calcium 2 plus, it would be like CIN is the thing that will happen. So if you have calcium 2 plus C, and you add excess sodium hydroxide, is insoluble. If you add excess ammonia, is uh, sorry, it, in excess, it produces insoluble salt, which means if you add a little bit, oh, it just dissolves, it dissolves. If you add a little bit more in excess, you see the insoluble salt. Wow, if you add excess, uh, ammonia to this Cindy, is, this does not mean not soluble, this means nothing happened. Yeah, so no matter how much you add to the calcium, nothing happened, that's why we say and. Okay, so next one is going to be PB2+, plus, which actually is PSI, pressure. So the, when you add excess NaOH, you create a soluble salt, so this means it's like still soluble and then you get insoluble. Okay, then moving on, you have the excess for Mg2+, plus, which is basically insoluble, excess for NH3, which is basically insoluble, excess NaOH for Al3+, plus, aluminium, is going to be soluble, excess NH3, insoluble, NaOH for Zn2+, plus, excess NaOH is going to be soluble, and excess NH3 is going to be soluble. Now, this is how it goes. Um, when you stuff, when you are testing this one, let's say I'm testing whether the there's a presence of cation. I prepare two test tubes, and then these two test tubes, one is going to be tested with extra NaOH, excess NaOH, another one is excess NH3. And I say which one that actually produce, let's say that the excess NaOH here, what well, it produces soluble precipitate, uh, is soluble, which means that the precipitate like dissolve away. And then this side it produces insoluble one. After you add excess, the precipitate does not dissolve away. So this means soluble, insoluble. That's going to be PB2 plus that's present inside. Moving on, you have this special one, it's the ammonium ammonium cation. It is not it does not react with anything. It does not give a damn about anything. So there's an N. And then you have your CO2 plus, Fe2 plus, and Fe3 plus. Just remember, uh, these two you get the same result because they are colorful. They are the colored ions, and CO2 plus is going to be it is I is blue. And yeah, just remember the color is blue. You just need to remember that. And then Fe2 plus is basically, it is dirty green. And Fe3 plus is going to be brown. Moving on to the last part where we talk about the cation test. There are only like 1, 2, 3, 4 of them to remember. For NH plus 4, the ammonium, you just test it with Nestle reagent. And basically NN, that's why it's Nestle. And by the way, Nestle reagent, it only reacts with ammonium cation. That's it. So, it actually turns a uh, Milo to brown. It's like the, I remember it through Nestle. So Nestle creates Milo and Milo turns to brown color. So basically Nestle reagent, it turns ammonium into brown precipitate. While for PB2+, is potassium iodide. I remember it through PSY, where you call it PIY somehow, potassium iodide. If you add with this particular lead and it becomes, it forms yellow precipitate. Then you have a potassium hexacyanoferrate 3 actually works with two. So you have to remember the number are the opposite and it forms that blue precipitate. So but if you have Fe3 plus ions, then you combine with potassium hexacyanoferate 2 and you get that blue precipitate. And potassium thiocyanate is like, if you combine with this, you actually get blood red configuration. That is like very red color. Just see it for yourself. It's beautiful, the chemistry inside. So basically just when these two combine together, you get blood red configuration. That looks very much like the blood color. That's why they say blood red. And the way I remember is it's just like Fe3 plus. FAC3, Fn3, 
Facebook. Book stands for blood. Yeah, always great ways for you to remember. Okay, I know that in initially it may seem very like hard for you to remember all this, but it comes with practice and a lot of readings. It may Actually, when I started learning this, I was also overwhelmed by the amount of information to remember. But just stay cool, create your ways, find some funny ways to remember, and you'll be fine. Okay, I'll see you next time.